we have only one microphone, one roaming microphone. I thought we could be more interactive with this first part as well, but I don't think we will be that much. Anyhow, we'll give a, we'll give a try in the second part where we are going to go into small groups around the room. I think this should be more relaxed and more easy. Uh, the goal of this session today is for everyone who is for the first time at the IJF, and even if you're not for the first time at the IJF, to get a better understanding of what the IJF is. I remember my first experience back in Athens 2006 at the first IJF. It was totally hectic. I came there, I didn't know where to look for, what to look for, so many people, booths, sessions, everything going on at the same time, the lunch taking place at the same time. So it's quite hectic. And then I have to admit that after the fourth day of the IGF in Athens, I was back home with quite a dizzy experience and asking what was this for? Was there any use of all of that? Now with in this first part, we'll try to go through a couple of basics about the IGF. Why do we need it? What are the formats of our interaction and what do we produce with it? And how to survive the IGF, how to survive these four days? especially with the remote participation, with the social media and everything. And we have a number of guests here that are going to help us map, map this field and then later on map the topics that IGF works on. And I'll start with, uh, with uh, Peter Mayer, who is involved with, uh, with the IGF for years, but also with the UN system, the commission that is working on the renewal, on, on, the, on the updates and upgrades of the IGF. So Peter, um, what would you say, why are we here? Can we really change something within these four days and how do we do that? Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I think uh, one of the reasons we are here is that we believe that we can change something. Uh, and I, I am really convinced that we can. Uh, the other reason we are here is uh, naturally to, to meet people, to exchange ideas, to, uh, to engage in discussions freely uh, without any uh, preliminary uh, engagements. And you can, you can meet practically every, everyone you wish to, uh, starting from ministers, uh, with the business uh, representative, civil society representative, government representative. So basically, uh, to me, when I first came to the IGF, and it was in 2008, uh, even though I knew what to expect, I have to admit that it was a magic for me. I was so enthusiastic, and I, so I was so happy that it, you, you have such a different uh, environment uh, uh, which I was used to, that uh, uh, I kept coming to IGFs uh, and kept being engaged in IGF even more. So uh, I was honored to be uh, selected as chairman of the working group on the improvements of the IGF, which on itself was also a very big experience. Uh, just two words about it. It was a real multi-stakeholder group uh, within the UN system, which is not very frequent. Oh, I, I must say it, it was almost the first one in the UN systems. So getting back to IGF, yes, uh, uh, you will see in the coming days that it's something extraordinary. You will have topics of uh, great interest to you. You can select yourself. In fact, you have, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's a very big choice of workshops, of main sessions, you can uh, participate. And I, I stress this word, participate, because at any moment, uh, you can be an active player in the workshops and in the main sessions, well, provided the, uh, th there are some kind of uh, uh, procedures uh, when uh, speakers give the, the speeches. But afterwards, in the, in the discussion sessions, you can, you can get engaged. So basically, this is the, the answer to your question, Lada. Uh, uh, if you want me, I can, I can just follow on uh, about the, the uh, ways and the structure of the IGF. Uh, the IGF, uh, 
is, uh, has its annual event once a year, but it is preceded by the preparatory meetings. Usually we have two or three meetings, which are kind of open consultations, where we, uh, uh, with the multi-stakeholder community, uh, try to find out in which way should we orient the IGF itself. That is what will be the main theme for the IGF. Then there is a call for workshops, and we decide also on the uh, main session themes. The workshops should be uh, kind of aligned in some way to the, uh, to the main themes. Well, uh, and the whole process is kind of uh, overlooked by a group which is called the multi-stakeholder advisory group. Uh, and as it is suggested by its name, it is really a multi-stakeholder group. The main task of this group is to evaluate the submitted workshops. In this year, we had an extremely difficult task evaluated about, evaluating about 150 workshops according to different criteria, uh, the relevance of the theme vis-a-vis uh, -vis the uh, main subjects. Uh, we should also evaluate the balances, that is, do we have gender balance, do we have geographical balance, do we have uh, panelists who are representing different stakeholders, and uh, we also have to eventually evaluate whether this is a, a workshop which can be considered to be a feeder workshop to the main sessions. Now, as for the themes, of this uh, Internet Governance Forum, you may know that we have, uh, I think, about six themes. Uh, I'm going to uh, list them, but not according to the importance of these themes. So we have access and diversity, we have security and privacy, we have the management of critical uh, infrastructure, we have the emerging issues. Uh, we have the taking stock session and the way forward. And I think I left out one. IG4D, which is, uh, which is really important. But all of them are important. So uh, uh, probably we will have a chance to talk about the different main themes uh, later on. Uh, but. Uh, we, we had to find a kind of balance among the themes as well, uh, and probably we had to choose the workshops according to this balance. I think now I stop and uh, I, I can follow up. Let me ask you, um, what do we get anything from, from meeting around? So we are going to sit down and we are going to discuss all these sessions, but do we get anything out of that apart from uh, maybe a bit of private experience and learning more? Why is the IGF relevant? What is the possibility to come out of the IGF discussions? Uh, it's, it's my opinion. Uh, it's important because you, ha you will have an opportunity to meet people, you otherwise you couldn't. Uh, and this is a way forward to, to uh, start eventually some projects, to have people from different environment engaged in in, in uh, processes and projects which otherwise couldn't come to, to, to life. Uh, and it's not only the individual experience we have, but probably it's a kind of, uh, you go home, you start thinking about and it will trigger you some ideas and will trigger you to start something new. Basically, that's how I see it. What? Um You've been Puat has been one of the one of the persons who has joined the IGF long ago, but basically as as a as a newcomer, and uh, and I think you were you were also quite shocked the first time when you came here. There was a you will notice it even even at this IGF the difference in in the, the dressing code from the um, NGOs and and open open sources community and so on to the diplomats and politicians and so on. Now it's less than it used to be a couple of years ago, but that was that was quite a shocking experience. Before, besides dress code, what was your shocking experience the first time and, mm -hmm. and how did you survive the first IGF? Thank you, Lada. 
Um, well, that is very right. My name is Fawad Bajwa. I come from Pakistan, and I truly come from Pakistan. I mean, there's no doubt to it. I live, work, and whatever I do with regards to the internet is in Pakistan. So my experience within the Internet Governance Forum has been a very interesting one, uh, which involves, this is how I am. What you see right now, this is how I've always been for the past four years at the Internet Governance Forum. I am practically representing my life, the, vo the voice of my groups, the voice of the people of Pakistan, the citizens of Pakistan, the way it is. There has been no makeup to it, and that is the spirit of the Internet Governance Forum. When we say that we come to a space where there is equal footing, where we are a community, and the basic elements of community is that we are willing to sit together and without generating conflict, we are ready to hear out each other. We're able to express our concerns. We are on an equal footing where there is no aristocracy, where there is no one, even a minister would be sitting with you. What? And you can have a... Do you have the impression that someone is there to hear you? Do you have the impression that someone will hear what you say? Uh, not only an impression, they do hear you. Just to share you with you an example, I was, I, I came into the IGF for the first time in planning the IGF. I became a member of the multi-stakeholder advisory group from the civil society, which is called, one, one of the members of the civil society is called the Internet Governance Caucus of Civil Society Organizations. And when I came to this forum and in its planning, I was sitting amongst people 33%, nearly 33% government, 33% people from civil society, technical community and academia, 33% pe people from uh, private sector, and then all the international multilateral organizations who were part of the visas process. And within that, and within that space, I proposed something, which is called the Internet Governance for Development. If you notice on the schedule, Today you see that as a main session. That is where we look at the development angle of internet governance. And at that stage, when I expressed that there was a need for this, like-minded people from the developing countries, they all gathered behind that particular opportunity to sp sort of identify where we could talk about development within, staying within IG, not dwelling out into telecoms, not going off into ICTs, not going where, like you ha hear all that information. And this was happening within the IGF. And this was the IGF. I joined from, for the IGF in Egypt, Sharam Sh Sharm el Sheikh, planning that IGF. Can you make an immediate impact within the IGF? Yes, you can. I came from a group which was educated, whose capacity was built by an organization called Diplo Foundation. Diplo Foundation runs an international program which is called the Internet Governance Capacity Building Program. I was there in the v World Summit on Information Society in Tunisia, but I was not a participant of the mainstream negotiations and activities. I was hearing the word multi-stakeholder. I did not understand what that meant. I, you can call me I was too young or naive or whatever, but I knew what the word community meant. And somebody at some stage told me, that as a community, we can sit together and we can hear out each other. We can listen to each other and we can innovate strategies whereby we can find solutions. So if you note what is happening at the IGF, you will be amazed as soon as this IGF is over, soon there will be a chart published on the IGF website which shows you where did people come from. And you will be amazed that they come from all parts of the world. They speak so many languages. This morning you had nearly eight, uh, six international languages being interpreted during the opening session. We are multilingual. We are able to listen each to each other. We're able to listen to each other's ideas. This is the only space in the world where the world multi-stakeholderism truly exists to the extent it is understood. This is the space where somebody from Egypt can come, somebody from Libya can come, somebody from Pakistan can come, 
somebody from Burma, from whatever country in the world can, if they can reach here. And people find amongst themselves ways to bring them here, opportunities to bring them here, help them build their capacity, help them identify ways where they can build partnerships to address issues. I can tell you what I started or became part of in 2009. Today, I am helping my country in Pakistan help fight an internet rights movement. And it's not a negative word. Internet rights, freedom of expression, the, cap the capability to understand that the internet is beneficial for your countries, for your people, that is a capacity building activity. That is where all sp stakeholders should sit down and try to understand that how together as nations or as regions they can move together. And it's a very long process. We are doing that. And I can attribute that success, though IGF is a dialogue space, an open dialogue, an open inclusive space for dialogue on internet related issues. But at the same time, it's a space where what we call corridor diplomacy, which means right now you're sitting here and listening to us, but outside in the corridors, you will see people meeting each other, exchanging their cards, finding opportunities to collaborate with each other. You'll see children around, around in the forum. You'll see youth around in the forum. You'll see old people, young people, adults, youth. You'll see all, all demogra demographics of society participating over here. Why are they doing that? This is the seventh year of the Internet Governance Forum. Why is the world getting together constantly away across the world? Why are countries offering to host the Internet Governance Forum? Because it does have an indirect impact on the way the internet is perceived, the way people understand the pluralism, whether it's social, economic, political, the pluralism which is happening on the internet and having effects on you. Today, I'm from a generation which was the PC computer generation. There are people today who are from the internet generation. And there's another generation evolving, which is the mobile, or, or what you call it, the cellular mobile generation. Just imagine they're being born into this and how much that impacts their lives. But then there are generations, there are gaps where people don't understand what their needs and their wants are. This is that space where people gather around. They have these workshops which are inclusive. And when I say inclusive, it means the government should be there. The civil society should be there. There should be an opportunity for youngsters to be there. There should be gender balance in the design and the programming of these workshops. There should be consideration for people with needs. There should be opportunity for people who are restricted or they have problems uh, getting here. They can participate through an online system. There are every year twice in Geneva, when the people, or, or maybe some places, some other places as well, when people sit down to plan the Internet Governance Forum, they keep you in mind. They keep the people of the world in mind. There are very, uh, there are some points of concern for various stakeholder groups, but then the intention of each stakeholder group is to keep their groups, the, at lar the people at large, their part their citizens from their countries, so stakeholders of their activities, they keep them in mind when designing the program of the IGF. Now, we, we went into um, why is it relevant and if IGF is relevant. And that is something that we'll definitely need to talk more. And we'll probably need to go into political processes to understand why it is relevant and what is the impact we can do. And we'll do that in the last part of this session. Before that, we'll go through the topics that we can discuss. And then we'll discuss the general diplomatic and political environment and if the IGF can really contribute and how it can change, make changes. But before we switch to the next part, which is the topics, I wanted to question two of you, maybe Peter, what would you suggest to them? What should they do in these four days at the IGF? Now, there are main sessions, there are workshops, there are booths over there, there is a lunch break, there is a coffee break, there's a lot of side sessions, a gala dinner, there's a remote participation, tweeting, social media, what should they do? How could they benefit the most and how could they bring the most to the IGF? I have to admit that uh, uh, when I first uh, participated in the IGF, uh, 
my idea was to, to participate in as many workshops as I could, to participate in as many main sessions as I could. And uh, at the end of the day, uh, of course, all these uh, events uh, kind of got mixed up. So uh, uh, at that point of time, I, I really thought that eventually it would be a good idea to have some kind of tool to uh, let it be some programming tool to uh, select those workshops which are really of interest, uh, a personal interest. Uh, so probably the, the uh, one way you can, you can uh, go about is to, to be very oriented, to thematically oriented. Uh, the other way could be the diversity. So uh, no, now I think the best way to go about is in between. So try not to grab too much because you can't retain all the information, but try to, to find an optimal way. Naturally, you should be guided by your main interest. Uh, you should attend those workshops and those main sessions eventually, but try to, to uh, go beyond and find out other areas as well. And uh, what is the most important part is to, to get the most of the personal contacts. Personal contacts are, are worth much more than uh, participating in a workshop. So in a, in a simple private conversation, you can get much more information. So probably there are a lot of complementary things and you should do it yourself. This is an extremely difficult exercise, but probably after the first your first IGF, you will find how you would do for the next time. What is it? Is it hard to to get reach to to the VIPs here and the speakers and the I don't know Vintsurf and the guys? How do you do that? How could I do that? Uh, Vintsurf is a very good example because you can walk to him and he will talk to you, and the younger you are, the uh, most agreeable he is. Um, probably. Uh, just listening to him as, uh, as he is the father of the, one of the fathers of the internet uh, is, is a real joy. He's full of ideas and he's, uh, he, 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 he knows practically every aspect of the internet. Uh, and I can say that there are many people like that uh, uh, who, can, who are extremely kind and you can walk over to them and you can ask them questions. Uh, you may have questions which are trivialities for them, but they will be extremely polite and they will answer you. Uh, some politicians are also uh, accessible. So you can walk to them and you can tell them your, your, your views, your problems uh, related to internet governance. Uh, you can give, give them ideas and they will be extremely happy. Uh, they may be uh, people who are not so easily accessible, but as a general rule, all the participants came here with the idea that, well, we are going to engage on an equal footing on discussions. So don't be shy. Just make your steps and they will be just happy. I think Fuad is one of the examples of not being shy, how you can approach someone, and he's doing really well. But uh, note and remember the faces you will see on this session today and don't be shy to grab any one of them to bring you to anyone else if you need and you see some of their communicating with someone you want to talk to and to the right one. Exactly. Um, just sh sharing the same uh, idea on windsurf because that's sort of a metaphor we're using but windsurf is a real person. I found that out when I actually came around this space. Why? For 10 or 12, nearly 12 years, I was teaching web engineering, internet engineering, and these kind of subjects. And we used to talk about the fathers of the internet. We used to talk about Windsurf. We used to talk about Steve Crocker and a whole lots of other people. We used to talk about John Postel. The interesting thing is the organization name you hear, which is called ICANN, is a formulation of these people with the stakeholders. Now, this is sort of historical moments. <coughs> but when you come to the IGF, as Peter shared, those some of those people are here with us. When you see Windsurf, you can just walk up 
and take a photograph with him. And that's what happened with me and Vilnius. And when I put that photograph up on my Facebook account, everyone was like, oh my goodness, this is the person who helped, who was part of the evolution of the internet. So just imagine that. History comes alive. Those people are real. The environment you are in, you know, Valada can testify to this, because who are the people we hang around in the IGF? <laughs> they're, the, they're like, uh, like the question, ministers? Yes. People who lead organizations in their country to the regards to the internet? Yes. People from companies who lead companies? Yes. And you're not shy to talk to them. That's the beauty of it. It's an open space. And I believe there are some colleagues of mine over here. We've been s meeting and uh, chatting with the CEO and president of ICANN, with the chairman of the board of ICANN. Out of any, at least I can tell you one thing, any be having a past life as an engineer, as a computer engineer, I would have never dreamed of actually meeting up with these people. The notion just didn't exist in Pakistan. But this space lets you evolve. It uh, lets you evolve as a person, as you're thinking, your exposure. And that exposure is very necessary because we have not just come out on the globe. We came out to the global level and we went back to our countries. In Pakistan, we're trying to create a space where internet governance issues can be openly, freely, and inclusively discussed. That wouldn't have happened if this direct interaction was not happening. And that's what comes from the IGF. Don't forget that even if you cannot come to one of the next IGFs, uh, the next one is probably in Indonesia, so it's good to come. But even if it's not possible for any reason, there is a remote participation. This is something that is probably not, not a unique thing from the IGF. It's also present in the ICON process, in the ITU process. But basically, it emerged to a large extent in this format from the IGF, which means that any one of you can be sitting home, having a webcast, having a, a captioning over there live, being able to read it afterwards as well, but also interacting, pose questions. And note that in every room, we have a couple of people like, like these three that are working on bringing people from the, from the remote space with questions, comments, and so on, whatever they need. So there is one very important model of being a part of the IGF, and trust me, because there is a dedicated person which raises a hand whenever you raise a question in the rem remote space, the question goes to the panel, or your comment, or whatever, so you can participate. There is even a bigger model of this participation, which is a remote hubs, which means you can organize a whole hub in your country in your city, bring people together and discuss the to these topics together and bring the questions straight to the panel and get the response or the comment and so on. And not the least, you can use Twitter, Facebook, you can blog, send photos from the IGF or where, wherever you are, discussing all of that and sometimes the discussions in the remote space, in the online space are more, even more frank, even more open than here because sometimes here we need to be shy not to say we need to be cautious what we are going to say what we are not in the online space if you watch the twitter feed you can see so many interesting things do that watch the twitter feed igf go and you'll see many things uh, happening right now so this is another model of participation before we move to to the topics peter any questions raise the raise the raise the hand if you want peter you can go ahead and i'll just pick up the question the, the hand uh, ju just before the questions, I want to add something uh, you can see on the screen that there's captioning. Uh, this was meant for people with uh, visual impairments, uh, for blind people, uh, uh, sorry, for, for uh, he hearing impairments. Uh, but it turned out to be an extremely good tool uh, for those people who are who's, uh, for whom English is not their native language. So it helped a lot, and it got we got a, a, a greater engagement from outside, from the remote participation. So that that is also a tool for remote participation. Now the question. Only one microphone, so I have to run around. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I'm Oras Tynkynen, a member of parliament from Finland. I have two questions. One is very practical, and one is a uh, little less so. I heard you mentioning gender balance two times. Uh, when we looked at the, the opening session today, I didn't really see gender balance. So can you perhaps reflect on that a bit? Um, my practical question is, is almost too practical to be put forward, but 
at least I haven't been able to access the internet at the Internet Governance Forum today. So I would really like to participate in the Twitter discussions and all that if I had the access. Uh, I can take that. Uh, as, as for the... Uh, I, 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 we mentioned gender balance uh, uh, with respect to the uh, workshops, with, with respect to the uh, main sessions and so on. As for the opening session, I don't think we have uh, any oversight who is going to attend the uh, ceremonial meetings. And it's mostly, I think, the prerogative of the organizers. Uh, in this particular case, I think the uh, uh, UNDESA and the uh, uh, Azerbaijani government uh, was in charge. So I, I cannot comment on that. I, I also had the same... Uh, uh, observation as you had about the gender balance or the lack of gender balance. Uh, now as for the uh, internet access, probably uh, uh, we are facing a kind of similar problem what we had in the ITU during the WSC 12, this is the World Radio Com Communication uh, Conference uh, this year. Uh, Probably the internet uh, access has been foreseen for s certain uh, number of participants, but it hasn't been foreseen that these participants will be equipped with uh, mobile equipments, and some of us do have two or three. So uh, it's, it's simply, I think it's a design issue. Uh, not the best design, I would say. Um. As part of uh, when the planning, because I've served for three years on the MAG, so as part of the planning activities, there are certain things that come under the MAG's uh, programming activities. And those are the main sessions and the workshops. And in the working groups uh, that the MAG leads, which lead to design the main sessions, these are very, these are very important points that they keep forward. The balance, right? Stakeholder balance, group balance, gender balance, an appropriate amount of diversity of views should be presented. But then the technical side of things, when we go into the nitty gritty of the organization, like the venue, the building design, and how the internet is supposed to operate over there and the accessibility, there have been cases in which one of the MAG members who would have such level of technical capacity like Patrick Pastrom is, is, is a, like a name. He would help out in the design of the network to manage such a high amount of people connecting to the internet. So this is sort of, we may we give the attribute of this as a technical glitch, but this is not an intended thing. We work really, the organizing teams, uh, the IGF Secretariat, the host country does work very hard to provide that capacity to manage so many connect connections. But then again, as Peter has mentioned, one each person is sometimes moving with anything between two to four devices. And if everyone takes those online, I have three right now with me, right? And you have four, right? Um, la once I came to the IG for seven devices, don't ask why, but uh, it was the need. So that situation can arise. We can sort of f forgive them for at least this, but I assure you one thing, this is also a takeaway from the current MAG and I'm, I'm sure that they will look at this when uh, hopefully uh, the next uh, IGF in, in Indonesia happens. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it was a really good question. I mean, two, two questions. And uh, I think this is one of, the, one of the goals of the IGF and one of the mandates of MAG uh, and, and all of us basically to improve on all these things. To be honest, for, for this couple of IGFs, I don't remember any single IGF that where, where the internet worked perfectly, and that, that has always been an issue. And I guess we instead we need someone from Cisco or from, from the others to talk why is it an issue. But we are not going to go into that. This is one of the challenges that we need to improve in, in future. Any other questions so we can move into the topics? I'll consider that as no. So the third par part of the session will cover the process. But before we go into the process and how do we make an impact with the IGF and what's happening besides the IGF, we should discuss the themes. And Peter briefly outlined the themes, the topics of the IGF this year. So I'll go probably, should we start with Judy? 
Um, access and diversity is one of the topics. I'll leave the floor to Judy to try to convince you that this is something you should be following in these four days. Judy, you have three minutes. <laughs> Thank you, Vlada. Uh, my name is Judy Okita. I come from Nairobi, Kenya. A MAG member uh, for this year. Access and diversity. Uh, when you look at your programs, it's in, uh, is it light green or lime? Yeah, somewhere there, but it's written AD in short. Um, the reason why we are here is because of accessibility. We are here because Azerbaijan is accessible either through air, either through water, either by road or by the train. And same aspect falls when it comes to the internet. We have to have accessible uh, internet wherever you are. You should be able to, um, when we look as at accessibility, we look at the infrastructure. We look at content, we look at, uh, um, is the content accessible to all groups of people? And um, if we are not re ready to diverse when it comes to the internet, then I don't think we should have it. Um, in this year's access and diversity, just a moment. We have a few questions that we'll be tackling in the, um, in the, in the workshops. Um, I've just uh, classified them in short. Uh, we have um, workshops that will be tackling the free flow of information. Uh, there are workshops that will be tackling infrastructure. There are workshops that will be tackling mobile and innovation. Uh, we have uh, workshops that will be tackling uh, women's empowerment and uh, multilingualism. So depending on where you feel your strength or your weaknesses are, I would encourage you to um, look at those workshops. Come, let us share the experiences we have. Um, come ready to learn as well and uh, to meet new people. Thank you. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm sure you will have a lot of questions about the topic of access and diversity, and I'm sure many of you are interested in some of the subtopics. Take a piece of paper, write them down, because after this round of introductions of the topics, we'll sit down in groups for each interesting topic. So you'll have the chance to discuss with Judy and the others what are the key topics, key sessions, and what you should do and you can do at the IGF in the next days within this particular topic. So Judy is about access and diversity. And we move to the Internet Governance for Development. We have Gianni and Ricardo. We're going to try to tell you what it is about and maybe challenge you to think more why is it this is the area you should get involved into. Dijani. Thank you, Vladimir. The, the leaders of the world expressed their uh, intention, their willing to build uh, a, a development-oriented information society. It was an... Uh, it was the first article of the Declaration of Principles of the World Summit on Information Society, first phase, uh, held in uh, Geneva, 2003. So, where we are now? We are in a, an information society oriented uh, the, toward development or not? What about the infrastructure? What about the inclusiveness? What about diversity? What about the do domain industry? Very important point. Are we going toward uh, an, uh, um, a development-oriented information society? Is the internet governance serving the development? I am here to discuss with you all those topics. Thank you, Tijani. Um, Ricardo is there on behalf of Veris, and he's also one of the guys that you should uh, try to talk to afterwards and chase them and so on, on big business. But he is involved in uh, preparation of the main session 
on, um, on IG4D. So many acronyms and abbreviations about the IGF. IG4D, main session, what do we have in plan? Thank you. Uh, good afternoon for everyone. Um, as you have noticed in, in, the, in the schedule uh, for this event, you are going to find different type of, of sessions. Um, for each one of the themes that were mentioned, uh, the, the sessions we are going uh, to, to have the opportunity at to attend are the, uh, one that corresponds to a main session, usually a three hours uh, activity, and uh, you have the second type of, of session is called the feeder session. You're going to, to identify them on, on the schedule by uh, F, FS or feeder says explicitly. And there are the main session, there are some se workshops that could help you to, to, to drill down of some of the main issues that are going to be addressed on the main session. And the third type of sessions you are going to find is the just workshops. So I'm going just to uh, encourage you to, to attend the main session. Um, I have been working with uh, some of my colleagues um, in, in terms to try to uh, structure the idea of a G4D for development uh, in, in, in a broad sense. And uh, this year in particular, there are three topics we are going to address. One is related to uh, new GTLDs. That's uh, an acronym for uh, a domain name, a new domain name in internet. So we are used to, to well, some of us some are used to uh, type a URL, www a name, dot something. Uh, the new search engines uh, for some people are the other way to access uh, the websites. Uh, but the domain names are part of the internet infrastructure, uh, as the same thing as the internet addresses. So this year in particular, we're going to address the new domain because it's, uh, it has been uh, an, op an opening of, of the domain space that has been uh, planned since last year and it's going to end with respect la next year. And what is really interesting behind this uh, subject is that there were uh, proposals around the world uh, to submit for, 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 for uh, getting new domain names. Um, so one of the question is, well, when you try to compare where these proposals come from and the, to try to link it with the development of the countries they come from, uh, there are some issues that uh, raise your concern. And uh, as uh, it was mentioned, you can think that this has been this is an opportunity that maybe enables the development of these uh, countries or these business communities, or is in the other side something that uh, increase a digital divide. Um, so there's a going to be some uh, interesting people that are going to discuss this topic. Um, a second view of IG4D is all, it's called the enabling environment. And I mean by that, all the different conditions, um, economic, uh, social, that uh, are created in, in the environment to uh, attract, in some way, investment and innovation. And with this investment and innovation, there is some kind of development that is generated. So. Again, there's a second track of the main session. And the third one is going to be focused on the infrastructure. So what are the, the, the main concerns regarding internet infrastructure, uh, from especially from developing countries? And uh, that could be some, for some, for of some from of you, uh, an aspect that is uh, 
could be a, an interesting lesson. Uh, there are going to be different perspectives uh, that are going to be reviewed. And as uh, has been mentioned before, one of the most important aspects, or I would say one of the, the, the interesting aspects, is to meet the people who are deeply involved in these issues. Uh, day to day, they are, they are really interested in pushing these ideas. So uh, that will be a great opportunity to meet them and to exchange your, your view with them. Thank you, Valerie. Thank you, Ricardo. So that was the IG4D, IG for development, where you have chance again to talk to these guys and the others just after this couple of presentations in one of the corners of this room. Put down the notes and the questions and the comments on the piece of paper so you can discuss it later. We move to the critical resources. And uh, Ricardo also, also mentioned the new top-level domains and what comes when, it, when we start talking about domain names and IP addresses. And there we have WIM, who is coming on behalf of the CCTLD uh, regist registries, which are those guys that are responsible for the top-level domain names of countries. But they're dealing with, with so many more things. What are the key issues of the critical infrastructure resources team? Uh, well, as a start, I think we, we have to um, go a little bit back and, and for all the ITF meetings I have been attending, I, there always has been some discussion about what is the term critical infrastructure and what is it about. Uh, if you would go to a completely other sector, you could say, okay, we just look in a network to the single point of failure and that is the only thing that we know. If it's working, uh, then the whole system works. If it's not working, then the whole system falls down. Uh, but this is not uh, the case with, uh, with the internet. There is no single point of, of failure. So the critical infrastructure or the critical um, infrastructure debate here at the IGF is, uh, is much wider. Uh, you can see that if you go to the um, main session and you look at the agenda of the main session, the first uh, item, it was already mentioned by Ricardo, the first question they will deal with is uh, new GTLDs. Uh, so you could wonder why or what uh, has new GTLDs to do with, uh, with critical infrastructure. I mean, if um, your website is not available on in, in under one uh, TLD, you can go to another one and you can strive around. Uh, because it's here put under the uh, critical infrastructure debate because one starts to focus on the question, okay, but if we have all those strings that come into, uh, into the root. If some countries are really against for religious reasons or religious reasons or other reason reasons, really against a certain uh, new GTLD, and they start to block, they start to put fences on, on well, try to put fences on their um, country's borders and say, okay, all traffic that comes in or people from in my country that go out and want to acts as one of those new top-level domains. Um, we try to block them, we try to make sure that they can't access. But then you have to know that this way of thinking is completely opposite to the whole way of thinking uh, the people that developed the internet uh, had in mind. Because they made just a whole structure, a whole internet, a whole uh, World Wide Web and it's not possible to, uh, to block. So the one of the sessions, uh, well, one of the questions in the critical infrastructure session will exactly deal with, okay, what are the risks uh, for the stability, for the security of the in internet for the whole system? Another question that will be discussed is the uh, IP. Uh, I think you all know, uh, since you are here, that basically the network, the internet works uh, on IP addresses and all the uh, computers, all the machines on the internet have their own address. Um, the question is, you, the current version, the IPv4 address, numbers of I IPv4 addresses is quite uh, is exhausted. So they have to step over from an IPv4 to a longer um, a number, number uh, longer IP addresses with much more numbers in it. The problem is the two uh, systems can't communicate with each other. So one half has to ask the question, okay, if we have to move from one system to another, what kind of... Um, uh, how can we do that in a way uh, that doesn't endanger the, uh, the structure, the stability of the whole network? Uh, that's a discussion uh, that will, uh, 
will be held also in the main session, but also in some of the um, some of the groups. A um, another part in the uh, in the main session will talk about wicket and the ITRs. Um, you probably already heard that mentioned during the um, the opening session. Um, governments are deciding on uh, new regulations for the uh, well, a new treaty for the telecom sector. Uh, some countries say, okay, the way the telecom sector works globally, uh, maybe we should take that same model and bring that to the uh, to the way the internet works. Um, there are a lot of arguments to say no, the the two are completely different. But there are s also smaller ideas. Okay, are they some things we learned from the telecom sector that we could say, okay, we could also use it for the. Um, uh, for the internet sector. Um, I think the main session will focus on questions like, okay, if we bring ideas uh, under Wicked, if countries say, okay, we want to deal with our local internet uh, in the way we deal with our telco, uh, try to see, okay, but this will bring uh, security risk, stability risks to the internet, to the uh, network itself. So that will be, um, one of the, the parts of the main session. The problem will be, uh, in fact, it or it are all really technical uh, topics, technical risks, uh, that in a way are on the crossroad with the political way of talking. And I think the whole main session and also one of the uh, um, reasons, one of the um, good uh, things of the IGF is that you really have and oblige those technical people to talk and discuss together uh, with the political. And they have to explain to each other. I mean, technical people have to explain to government people why they can't say, okay, the internet stops at your border. Perfect. And you, you mentioned very well that, that there are technical issues and even though some of you might not be techies, uh, there is a lot of political in that. And certainly that requires times for all of, all of the people that are not with technical background to get into what the IPs, how the packages travel, what the, the how the DNS works, and so on. But there are so many implications which are political and social in this in this part of the of the IJF that it's really relevant to follow that as well. Thank you, Wim. Now we, you mentioned uh, Dijani, you wanted to jump in. Yes, only a small thing. Uh, we are speaking about uh, uh, the um, uh, internet critical um, uh, resources and not uh, critical uh, uh, infrastructure. It is more relevant with the uh, domain names, the with the domains, GTLDs, uh, because it's not a transactory, it's more. Uh, Thank you. So, about the critical resources, and then DNS and IP are definitely critical resource without which we wouldn't have internet. And you mentioned uh, we a couple of security problems that can emerge with the transition of IPv4 to IPv6 and so on. But security is a so big area. And then we managed to merge it even with, with more other, uh, like openness and privacy and so on. And it makes sense when you take a look at the number of proposals at the IGF or the workshops, you will see that the biggest number of workshops was under the area of security, openness and privacy. So one could say, why didn't we split it into more? Because it's intertwined, it's, it's interrelated. So when you cons consider security, you should also consider privacy, you should consider openness and so on. So Julia is there, and she was involved with security, openness, and privacy group. What do we have on the menu at the IGF in these areas? Thank you so much, Vlada. <coughs> My name is Julia Morinitz. I'm from the organization Tech, Together Against Cybercrime. I'm also from the MAG. And actually, I'm here today to present another uh, subject what, uh, which was uh, chosen for the main session, so security, openness, and privacy. So uh, I think that it's very important to understand why this subject was chosen and is proposed for the main session. Um, well, it seems to be quite obvious that uh, actually all of us would like to enjoy the possibilities that offer ICTs and the internet and to take uh, positive advantage uh, from this space and to be at the same time secure, to be sure that we are secure and safe once being online. So I would like to ask you a question and please r raise your hands. Who has never asked him or herself, is it secure to do what I'm doing now online? So the majority asked 
yourself, you ask yourself this question, I'm s uh, am I secure online? And another question I would like to, uh, to ask you, can I post this sentence or can I do this online? Can I express myself online? So, no hands? Okay, um, so what I would like to say with this is that um, I think everybody, and um, I'm the first to be sure that when I'm online and I w when I would like to buy something online and enjoy the um, advantages or the prices which uh, the, um, for example, e-commerce can offer, I would like to be sure that when I buy something online and my bank data will not be stolen, right? That I will be secure. At the same time, I would, li I would like to be sure that, for example, when I share in the information or when I would like to tweet about a recipe of one of the cakes, um, I, I will be sure that my personal data that I will leave online will not be used for some other purposes that I, um, that I don't, uh, for, for which I didn't uh, give the, um, uh, the consent or for other purposes that, that I don't know. And at the same time, I would like to be sure that once I'm online, I can express myself and I can freely give my opinion about one thing or another one. So practically, I would say that this session, security, openness, and privacy, it will be about this balance. How can I be sure that I will be safe and secure online? And at the same time, to have and to enjoy this freedom of um, expression. And uh, for example, how can I be sure that this sentence, I can post it online and in let's say sentence X and another one sentence Z, it can be considered already, already to be a hate speech and they even could be persecuted as uh, for a criminal, as a criminal offender. So I think um, it will be, all the discussion will be about this uh, balance and the difficulties um, are the following. Actually, we need to, to find solutions, but the solutions that we need to find should be based on the multi-stakeholder consultation uh, of course, can be, uh, they need to be from legal, technical, social perspective and need to take into account regional and national specificities and, uh, um, and difficulties, of course. So just quickly to give you the idea what will be the main uh, subjects of this um, plenary session on of this uh, main theme, uh, uh, security, openness and privacy. So of course we will have uh, cybercrime, cybersecurity, um, child online protection, child abuse, data protection, privacy, very important, hate speech, freedom of expression, cloud computing, human rights, surveillance, responsibilities of different actors. And of course, we will have a number of FIDE workshops uh, who will be uh, bring the details of the, of the new discussion that was chosen this year. And actually, I would like to invite you to join the group later on and to discuss into details and to raise, uh, to bring new ideas, new questions to, the, um, to this issue. Thank you. Thank you, Yulia. Well, when you list all of these uh, topics, I, I wonder wh what is left for the other two areas that we, that we have. One is the emerging issues. Unfortunately, we don't have anyone currently who can present more on emerging issues. I don't know if any one of you can, can remind us what, what's on the agenda. But if not, you can take a look at the, at the agenda and see what the main topics of the emerging issues are, especially of the workshops. And, uh, and then it leads us to the last one, last but not the least, which is taking stocks and the way forward. And it's something that I've always been confused from the beginnings of the IGF, what is this about taking stocks and the way forward? And by the time I'm, I'm realizing it's probably one of the most important parts, which is what, where are we going to? What's happening? Where are we going to? Is it useful? How do we improve the process? How do we link the process with other processes that exist about internet governance? How do we extend it to the national level, to the regional level? How do we involve more people? How do we bring capacities? Peter is involved in that. Um, briefly, what can we expect on this idea? Well, basically, if you miss the whole IGF, this is the uh, session you shouldn't miss. Uh, the reason for that, that uh, put it modestly that I'm involved in the organiza organization of this session and uh, this seems to be uh, the one which sums up what has happened during the three four days and if you really miss something from one of the uh, main topics at least you will have a glimpse uh, what was going on because the moderators of the main sessions are going to report to this session and uh, uh, so 
in addition to that, well, as, as for all the themes, you have workshops and moderators of the field of workshops are going to report on that. Now, very quickly, what we are going to expect? Well, first of all, as Lada said, well, we are going to have a kind of a summing up what has happened during this work, uh, this IGF, what are the real messages from the IGF. We don't know yet. Uh, it, we are going to find it out during these days. Uh, but this will be the first part with two facilitators. And there will be a second part. Uh, we have been having a long, long discussion since the very beginning, almost very beginning of the IGF. What are the principles we should be following in using the internet? What are the principles, well, most of us should adhere to? And there are really uh, very many uh, proposals in this aspect. There are governments who are proposing, there are international organizations, intergovernmental organizations, civil society, and so on and so forth. So we try to, to uh, uh, look into these as well in the second part. Uh, and uh, uh, naturally, this is also a part when uh, we can gather the information from the cloud. And I think, Vlada, you are going to gather this information and provide us with this information from outside. And uh, there will be a part when we are going to talk about the, uh, uh, also in this uh, uh, discussions, uh, about, interestingly, about the wicket. Uh, this conference which is coming up in Dubai and uh, which you might have heard during the opening session uh, today from uh, Secretary General of the ITU uh, who has elaborated on uh, just making a statement that Wicked is not about to take over the internet. However, Wicked may influence the internet and the way we are using it. Uh, but it was kind of reassuring to hear from him that it will happen only in case of consensus. But basically, we are going to deal with this topic as well. And in the topic number three, uh, this will be uh, the way forward. Uh, the way forward is also uh, trying to collect all the information we had up to then. And in addition to that, we are going to discuss eventually the uh, results of the already mentioned working group on the improvement of the CSTD, where we have put forward some uh, recommendations how to make uh, IGFs better. And these are, there were about 39 recommendations, and uh, there was no provision how to implement these recommendations. So probably this is an excellent opportunity for you also to contribute to that. Well, what do you think should be improved and how it should be improved and how, we, how is this in, in, uh, in light of the recommendations of this working group? And we are going to look ahead what may be the, uh, probably by that time we may have some ideas what has happened in the UN General Assembly, which is uh, also discussing these issues right now in New York, or it will be discussing this week and the week after. So probably uh, it will help you also to, to have a clear view. And uh, fi finally, last but not least, uh, as it has been already mentioned several occasions, we are approaching the 10-year anniversary of the WISIS process. And we are approaching the WISIS plus 10. And there are some discussions how to, to go about it. Should it be a big event? Should it be a kind of... Uh, uh forum-like event. We don't know yet. It's also in the hands of the General Assembly, which will uh, decide on that. But anyway, uh, what is going to happen after this 10 years? And it will affect the IGF itself. So if we are going to continue the visits, in what way are we continuing? And if we are going to continue the IGF, what, what are the, the aspects of that? And last but not least, we, are we have to also mention that well, there are other IGFs which have stemmed from the, the global one. We have the regional IGFs, we have the national IGFs, uh, which are extremely uh, important events. So this part also tries and deals with, deals with uh, these aspects. So basically, uh, if you don't want to miss the best part of the IGF, please do come to the Taking Stock session on the way forward, because you will be, imp uh, you will be involved in forming the future IGF. Thank you, Peter. So I think there, there are many, many open questions. 
And sometimes I get the impression that the IJF, in fact, opens the questions instead of, instead of closing them, but that's a good beginning. Starting from the how internet works, what's happening with the IPv6, uh, how does the DNS work, how does the new GTLDs impact the development of the internet, what's happening with the content policy, can anyone control the content, what's happening with the censorship, freedom of expression, uh, where are we with the security, what are the security challenges, cyber war, cyber crime, uh, child safety, uh, what's happening with the processes, what is ITU doing, what is ICANN doing, uh, where is the internet governance going to, how is diplomacy impacting all of that and the multi-stakeholderism, these are all the questions that you have the chance to ask them now and also in the next four days. Now we are doing something at this session that is not really typical for the IGF, we're doing the, the group work, so use the opportunity, it's probably the only opportunity you'll see the group work at the IGF. Uh, we're going to split into a couple of corners, so choose your topic. Now again, we have Judy who is discussing access and diversity. She'll remain here, just approach her and sit around so you can discuss more. We have Ricardo and Tijani, they're discussing IG for development. They're going to be in the middle right there, so you can just jump and discuss with them. You can also change the groups and move to another group if you want. We have Peter who is going to be discussing taking stocks and what's happening on a political level. He's going to be in that far corner over there, so join him. We'll have WIM and Center and whoever else is interested in critical resources. Uh, WIM is going to be just over there next to the monitor, so join him. And we have Yulia who is going to help mapping cybersecurity, privacy and openness and all the issues related. She's going to be in this corner. So now we have another like 40 minutes, half an hour to discuss. Choose your group, move around, roam around and we are back five o'clock here. Grab a coffee afterwards. We are back five o'clock to discuss the political aspects, what happening with the ITU, with ICANN, with IGF, where are we going, diplomacy, multi-stakeholderism, the future of IV IGF and so on. See you five o'clock in the meantime, use the groups. Thank you. <laughs>